Okay, now we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 58, 61. So if you would not be watchful to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may reverently fear this glorious and fearful name and presence, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary strokes and blows, great plagues of long continuance and grievous sicknesses of long duration. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the disease of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every affliction which is not written in this book of the law, the Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed. Wow! That's a pretty heavy word. It is. That is a pretty heavy word. And people wonder why they get sick. Why do they get sick? Well, it tells us from the, the first beginning of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, verse 58. If you will not be watchful to obey the word of the Lord. We can take that the other way. If we are watchful and if we obey, I tell you, you hear me say this all the time, but the more I study the word of God, the more I know the character of God and look at his word, it comes back every time, every time to one word, one action, obedience. obedience. And that hasn't changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The Old Testament to obey is better than sacrifice. God brought the law in. People think he brought the law in to save people. The law never saved anyone. The law just exposed how wretched we are, how sinful we are, and again revealed the mercy and the love and the grace of God. And, and he has always looked for obedience in his people. And that's how you grow. That's how you grow. That's how you come close to God. Yeah. That's how you attract the blessing and the favour of God when you obey Him and you obey His word. People think, well, you know, I obey Him, but I don't know about His word. Well, you cannot separate the two. In fact, God became flesh. Yeah. The word of God became flesh mm. and dwelt among men. And, and, and that's why Jesus said, you need to partake of me, eat my flesh, drink my blood. We need to literally be partakers of the word of God. It is, you read that scripture this morning, just before, uh, through the, what was it, through the, uh, blood, the blood spirit, the blood, so the blood water, water, blood, water, and spirit. And spirit. The witness. Yeah, the witness. The water there, I believe, some people say it's baptism. I don't believe it's baptism. No, I believe the water we're seeing very clearly in the word of God that we are washed by the word. That's, that water there, I believe, is the word of God. And we are washed and cleansed. We uh, are cleansed and washed by the word of God. Yeah. Paul says, wash, be washed, sanctify your minds, cleanse your minds through the word of God. Um, and so here we have a, a very strong uh, rebuke and instruction to God's people way back even in the Old Testament that says very clearly, if you will not obey me. And listen, if we're not obeying God, who are we obeying? We obey him who we serve. Okay? Who we serve, we obey. And if we serve God, then we need to obey God. If we're not obeying God, we're not serving God. Therefore, we're serving another. And the Bible says the devil is a liar and a deceiver. And he is the one who disobeyed God from the beginning. And so when we disobey, which is sin, what is sin? Sin is unto him who knows what is right to do and does not do it. This is sin, the Bible says. Sin is disobedience disobeying God that is sin and we know that the devil is a sinner from the beginning and was cast from heaven because he disobeyed God and so when we do not obey God and we disobey him then we are a liar and we are disobedient as the devil we serve the devil scripture says that and so we need to choose this day whom you will serve choose you this day who you will serve be it God then serve him with everything Serve him. The requirements of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has been totally watered down. Totally. We have, be, we have made God just our buddy buddy. And we're in doing so, and that while this is true of God, he, he calls us friends, no longer even servants, to those who obey him and those who know him. And, um, but he said that not all will be saved, only those who do, does the will who does the will of my father. In other words, only he who obeys my father, who is in heaven. And he goes and, and he just makes it also for us Pentecostals. He doesn't leave us out. He says that you've prophesied, you've laid hands on the sick. But he says, depart from me, I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. You workers of disobedience. 
unto the word. Now, iniquity also means hidden sin. Iniquity means it covers hidden sin. You workers, you, you, I do not know you, for you have hidden sin in your life. Deceit. And of course, we know the greatest thing is um, hypocrisy. Jesus stood against hypocrisy like no other. He rebuked openly, he rebuked prophecy. He called those, those priests and those Pharisees and Sadducees, the very people who were uh, supposed to lead the people of God. Uh, he called them uh, a lot of names. <laughs> that is it. And he publicly exposed them, pointed to them and says, unless your righteousness becomes better than him, you're not even going to get anywhere near the kingdom of God. How would you like that? How would you like that? That's Jesus didn't muck around with hypocrisy. Yet today we accept hypocrites just like one of, of, of a, as a true believer. And that is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. Paul never accepted it. Paul kicked those people out of the church and he instructed every preacher, every pastor, or apostle, whatever. He instructed the deacons to kick out any person that calls himself a Christian that continues in fellowship and is living as a sinner as a liar, as a deceiver in sexual immorality. Yet today our churches are full of, of Christians, professing Christians who are living in adultery and fornication. And not just that, we, and we would like to pull these more prominent sins out, but amongst the list we, we read one little word. Greed. Greed. Listed amongst sexual immorality. Greed. Well, I think that's just, we have just wiped out 90% of the Christians that are attending churches, possibly. 70%, I don't know what the percentage is, but a high percentage of Christians have just been wiped out of the kingdom of God. And we, we think, oh, come on, God, God loves you. God's patient. God. Yes, God is all these things, but he also is holy. He is holy. In fact, we read in, in Daniel is one of the, the, the rare uh, visions we have of heaven and Revelation too of course but in Daniel we see uh, a picture of heaven and we see these these creatures that God have created to be in his presence and to cry out continuously what do they cry out love 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 mercy 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 patience pa no they cry out holy 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 Holy, set apart, set apart, set apart is God from sin, from anything that reeks of any of of uh, you know of sin, because that's what holiness is. Holiness is being set apart, set apart from what? Set apart from the world, in the world, but not of the world. Yeah. Set apart from disobedience. Set apart from sin. Set apart from rebellion. And all these things, and without holiness, no man will see God. No, we will not come into his presence. In fact, these creatures that God has created that have, well, we read at least six wings, but maybe they've got more. I don't know, but it talks about six wings. These very angels of heaven or, uh, that God has created that are, are created to live in his presence, continually crying out, holy, 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 we read that two of their hands cover their eyes they can't even look upon God yet they were created to be in his presence and two of their hands cover their feet they can't even stand in the presence of God they can't stand in his presence they can't look upon him that's how holy he is they know the fear of God holy 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 and I guess two wings are used to fly Unless there's any more, I don't know. But we just take this for granted. But God is a holy God who will not tolerate disobedience and sin in our lives. And so much so that he paid the ultimate price. I was going to preach on healing. But, uh, <laughs> I might get there. Um, so much so God hates sin so much the first person that sinned was thrown out of heaven and you know what a third of the angels 
were thrown out of heaven with him. He was immediately cast out of the presence of a Sin bans us from the presence of God. Look at Adam and Eve in the garden, God's best friend. Every day came down and walked with Adam and Eve, communed, walked, talked, fellowship, loved them. The minute they sinned, you're out of here, guys. You are out of my presence. I will no longer come and walk with you. In fact, you're out of this whole creation. You're out of this garden I put you in charge of, this beautiful fruit, everything that is just given to you on a platter. You are no longer even going to experience any of it. And you are out of the garden. I'm going to put an angel there with a sword to slaughter you if you even try to enter. Mm. Immediately they were cast out in their relationship because of sin. Do we have any understanding? We just, yet we just treat sin. Oh, it's okay. God overlooks it. Oh, we're, uh, you know, we're not under law, brother. We're under grace. You've got no idea what that even means. <laughs> this rubbish talk that waters down the holiness of God and the righteousness of God and the justice of God. And then right... From that moment, Adam and Eve, they were just cast from, you know, from white to blackness in comparison. Mm. Everything, they just walk up to any tree and eat of every fruit, vegetable, what, everything just laid on for them. And they were cast out into a, a, a barren land. And God said, now you're just going to have to work hard to even just plant a seed and get it to grow. And then you're going to have to weed it and weed it and weed it because they're going to take over. Unless you really work hard, you're not going to have nothing to eat at all. <laughs> I mean, this is black and white. You know, because of what?